A very good morning to you. Welcome to my thought for the day. Just a few more thoughts, really, um, about this story, Luke's story here that he tells, that Jesus told to a large crowd, not just his disciples, in Luke 19, 11 to 27. It's about the, um, the, the nobleman who went away for a, quite a long period of time and left uh, 10 of his uh, servants with one mina each or one pound each, about three months wages. And he asked them to trade with the money until he returned. And it does say that a lot of people, um, a lot of the people in the country where he was, uh, he, he'd been living in, um, uh, didn't want him to come back and be their king. And that is ob very obviously a comment on the Jewish authorities and many of the Jews who at that very moment were cheering Jesus on. They wanted him to establish a kingdom now, to set them free from Rome. They didn't want the kind of kingdom he wanted to bring in, which was a kingdom not of this world. And they rejected him as a result of that, um, which was, which is... Not a, not a good idea, <laughs> not a good idea to reject the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Um, uh, there will be recompense for those who reject his lordship and kingship. Um, and I, I, I've said a lot of things in the last couple of days, but <clears throat> I was thinking there's two thoughts that came to me. One, one was that there's a lot of entrustment here in this story these servants were trusted enough by their master to be given uh, money for which they were individually responsible rather than just uh, money that was part of the running of the estate, um, uh, you know, looking after the house and so on. Uh, they had investments to make with money. Now, it may be that the Lord is referring to, specifically to money, but also we can take this to mean Everything that has been given to us by God is entrusted to us for us to be stewards of. The servants did not own the money. Not until the master came back and gave them, gave them authority, gave them more than they ever had. But the money was never theirs. And there is something about us, you know, everything, every ability, every talent, every gift of the Holy Spirit, every every ability that we have is, is, a, is given to us in stewardship. It's entrusted to us to use for the kingdom, not to use for ourselves, to use for the kingdom. And it doesn't belong to us. Our money doesn't belong to us. It's God's money in our bank accounts and in our purses and wallets. Not ours. It's his. And we have to use it wisely. And, uh, I mean, there are those who, who are only faithful when they're seen. <clears throat> they're not faithful when there's nobody to see what they're doing. And I was thinking about the third servant who put his money in a safe place, wrapped it up in a safe place, and set it aside. So he didn't use it for himself, um, and he didn't use it for anybody else. And he, he, the reason was that he was afraid of the master if, if he did invest it and made a poor investment, that uh, uh, the master would be very angry with him. And I think that says something to us, you know. Sometimes we're afraid to do anything in case we do the wrong thing. We're afraid to step out without what we would think of as a direct word from God about what we should do. We're afraid to do anything <coughs> because we might do the wrong thing. And this is what this servant was. He was afraid to invest. He was afraid to do anything with this money in case he lost it. 
and then the master would be angry with him. So he just kept it, put it to one side and gave back what he'd had. It doesn't say what the master would have said if he'd invested it and lost a third of it. it. We don't get that in this story, so we won't speculate on that. But doing nothing with what God has given us is not acceptable. Just putting it aside and saying, well, I haven't had any direct instructions from the master how to invest this money, where to invest it, who to invest it with, um, which portfolio to put it in, which shares, stocks and shares to invest in. He, ha he hasn't told me specifically whether I should do this, that or the other. Therefore, until I get a, get a direct instruction, I won't do anything. He didn't do anything. He kept it, put it aside. And the master was very angry with him and took away what he had. And if it is money that is being talked about here, perhaps you feel you can't do anything. But what you can do is invest what money you have in things, in people who are advancing the kingdom of God and make an investment in that way. You know, not just put it aside, but say, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do for the Lord, but these people are serving the Lord, doing this, that or the other. I will therefore invest money in that. I will put my money, I'll put the money the Lord has given me into that. And there will be a return on, on my behalf by someone else who is doing something they are called to. Even that would have been better than putting the money to one side and doing nothing with it. This, the freedom in this story as to how to use what God had given, what the master had given to each servant, is enormous. And the master did not give them directions as to how they were to invest their money. He left it up to them. He trusted them to follow their hearts and to do what felt right to them and the return he was very pleased with. A lot to think about. Being passive as a Christian is not an option. If we don't know what to do, there are lots of things that are good that we can start doing. And sooner or later, as our little boat moves under the under the wind of the of of the say in the in our sails, the wind of the spirit in our sails, God can direct us into what He wants us to do. It's very difficult to to direct a boat that is stationary. You need to let the wind fill the sails so that the rudder can bite. And as you do things, you will find the direction that God wants you to go in and the calling that's on your life. Don't be, don't be. Anyway, that's enough. It's, oh, my eight, oh gosh, time is up. I hope you're blessed. I hope you have a good day. God bless you. Bye-bye.